What's happening guys? Dan here, D Speed Shop, and today working on the 55 Chevy Nomad. So um I have somehow become a nomad individual over the past couple of years, something I never thought I would ever have one of, and yet now I have two. Well the bank has half of one, but you just we're not keep track of that. Anyways, um so this car I bought last year, like right before it snowed, I'm gonna say November-ish, October, November from a uh, mechanics lean towing auction. Uh, I think I got a deal on it, but it's definitely not cheap. And it was a bit of a gamble because I didn't know anything about the car. It was full of junk, four flat tires, just whatever. Uh, the hood had, you know, kind of KO'd in the roof and a few things. So it's, you know, it shows nice, but it's, you know, it's a little rough. It's, 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 had, a, it's had a life. It's been keyed up, unfortunately. And stuff like that so while it's a very nice car it's kind of right up my alley where it's got just a little bit of it's got a story to it i believe this thing was probably restored or fixed up in the 70s or the 80s something along those lines it's had a repaint it's had the interior uh gone through i'm just kind of giving a little synopsis in case you're you're new or, or we've forgotten um so it'll be a really nice kind of driver it's uh, kind of very, look how nice the door, it's just, ugh, ugh, gives me chills. Um, so I had bought this thing on a bit of a whim, it ended up needing floors, um, I did a bunch of patch panels on the floors, really took my time, I think I did a pretty decent job, I'm not going to lie, it wasn't as good as a full floor pan, but I didn't want to have to take this car completely apart. Um, even though the hood's kind of beat up, I mean, everything is just aligned nicely and, and it's just perfect. So the whole front clip would have to come off, motor trans out, slide the floor in, all, all that sort of stuff. I just, I didn't have the heart to take this thing apart because it's such a nice original. I say original, but it's not original, but you know what I mean? Like it's, it's, it's been like this for 40 years, original. I didn't want to mess with it. Um, so ultimately it has, this was like a really high option car when it was, you know, ordered all this little doodad extra trim. It actually has power windows on it. It has power seat, no power locks, but all these little bumper guards and all this kind of stuff is all, you know, kind of extra and nice. And it wasn't this color originally, but this is my favorite color for a 55, well, for a Nomad or, you know, 57 Chevy. The kind of bluey color with the white on top. Now there's different kind of colors, but this th this is this is the car you see on the posters for car shows, and I love it. So I put together the floor pans. That's all good. Um, we put new front brakes on. We upgraded the disc brakes. Uh, we lowered it a little bit, which that was my own style. That's what I wanted. Um, what else do we do? I think very minor stuff. A lot of it's done underneath. It's a very complete car. We've gone through it. Um, I don't know if I did shocks on it, but I mean, it, it, it should be fine. Ultimately, anyways, long story short, I'm, I'm rambling. So this thing here, we got her done, I'm going to say in January, it got to this level where it was kind of everything was working-ish and it needed some final touching. So I have to get underneath, uh, seam seal, undercoat, you know, grind, all that sort of stuff. The back brake, I ran a line to it, but I didn't, it's kind of, it's not proper. I want to do it a little nicer. Um, the exhaust I had taken down to kind of get to a few spots. I'm going to put it back up for the time being. We have to go through inspections here. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm going to work, 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 and have this thing like perfect for February 2nd. Who cares? <laughs> it's going to sit there. So now I'll have to pay off of finishing it and going to drive it a little bit. So I have an appointment next week for an inspection. So hopefully everything goes, you know, kind of cool there. We'll do a couple of videos, just kind of giving it a once over. And then hopefully I can drive this thing. It's a 327 with a three speed stick with overdrive. I don't know if the overdrive works in a stock rear end. Well, everything is kind of stock. The seat has a tear in it, unfortunately, but otherwise everything's been kind of redone and it's very nice. Not, not original door panels or nothing like that. I put a carpet kit in it, but uh, oh, it's a very, this is a gorgeous car and I own it and I'm very excited about it. So I'd like to drive a little bit, whether it goes on the block to be sold for some property, I'm not 100% sure yet. I don't think this is a once in a lifetime car, but uh, it's probably not gonna come up that often. So I would like to enjoy it a little bit uh, before we decide what we're gonna do with it. 
yeah, look at this thing. The battery's just gonna go like the lights work, like the, it has a headliner, like all the trim is decent. Um, I didn't meet the guy who owned it. There's a bit of a sad story as to how it kind of ended up obviously in, a, in an auction, uh, especially a uh, mechanics lien auction. But I know a guy who kind of knew the guy and this was kind of his pride and joy of a car. And uh, as much as I'd like to just kind of flip it <clears throat> and make a few bucks, I do want to drive it a little and uh, enjoy it. You know, pay homage to it. This thing sat for 20 plus years in a garage um, and I, I think it needs to stretch its legs a little bit. It'll take it out until at least it pisses me off and I'll get mad at it. So let's get this thing up in the air. We'll get under it. We'll see what I, I've done. I think up top, obviously a floor and all that in there. So I think I used sound deadening and all sorts of stuff. I don't know, maybe I didn't, I don't remember actually, but underneath it still has welds to be ground down and uh, seam sealed and undercoated. So that's the plan for today. And uh, double check all the lights, make sure the tail pipe is hanging up. And I kind of think that's it. I did get some temporary uh, insurance on it so we can drive it like legally and go from there. Little things kind of hang down, we got a zip tie up or whatever, but yeah. It's a very nice car. So thanks for watching and subscribing. And if you haven't, could you please? Cause uh, in this case, it, it's expensive. See you up in the air. Okay, so let's just go on a little tour underneath the old girl. Um, so it has drop, spindles, disc brakes. Um, everything has cotter pinned and good. Oh, I did put new front shocks in, not, not new rears. Um, the ball joints, when I test them, are all good. They are bolt-in. Uh, factories would have been riveted, so they've been done at some point in their life. The bushings were, I mean, they have a little bit of cracking, but honestly, not too bad. And as I've come around in my old age of working on hot rods, I honestly think that this stuff that's probably done 40 years ago is better and going to last than whatever new stuff I would put in today. I've put in Moogs and AC Delcos and all that stuff. I swear to God, it's the same stuff, different box these days. And uh, well, that 56 Chevy wagon that we just sold, it had brand new bushings in it, didn't have 200 miles on it, and uh, they looked the same. Not saying they're wore out, well, oh, bunny, but uh, they, they start to kind of show a little bit of wear, and these are probably who knows what. Um, yeah, so I mean, everything is good there. We have no real issues. That's pretty slick. It was undercoated at some point in its life. Oh, it needs a bumper, bumper bolt. Um, around here, I'll just show you. Hang on, I gotta jump over this hydraulic line. There we go, we're getting there. So it needs, I put new body bushings in, but needs the bottom side and the bolts on all these. And as you can see, these are all new floor pans kind of patched in. So they all look pretty good, need a little bit of grinding. No big deal, there's one little patch I had to put in there uh, for the rocker, but I was happy with it. Back there was good, and I ended up changing this back brace as well. Oh, and a little bit of the inner rocker, I guess, was changed. Kind of both sides. Um, this back floor pan was good, I changed the, oops. Oh, lost my hat. I changed this back floor pan, so it, like, this needs to be kind of just ground down nothing too crazy and seam sealed and undercoated. Um, yeah, the back, oh, I guess I gotta do something with the back shocks there. Ooh, they're pretty beat. I wonder if I have back shocks or if I'm buying some. Uh, or at least just stake those back on. Looks like I put a new fuel tank in it. I forgot I did that. Uh, and this is the fuel line or the brake line, sorry, I just kind of ran it. It, it. it works, but it needs to be properly secured. You know, e-brakes all good. There's really not a whole lot of issues. Um, the exhaust, it's hanging. Um, so we gotta address that, obviously. But uh, otherwise, I mean, all I do is take some bolts out so we can put those back in and it'll have that. Yeah, the quarters all look good. Yeah, a little bit of flaking, undercoating rust and stuff like that. But if we hose that down with a little bit of undercoating, should be fine. I believe the brake lights and all that work. We'll have to double check. The wiring's hanging down a little bit here. I don't know what all this is. We'll have to go through that. And yeah, the bushings, they're a little warm, but honestly not terrible for what it is. So again, 
changing stuff, which I'm not against. If you guys have watched the channel, I'm not against spending money on that stuff or my time even. But I honestly believe the stuff that's in there is probably just as good as anything we're going to put in. <laughs> so we'll drive it, see what happens. I would like proper dual exhaust, just some two and a quarter inch exhaust put on this thing with some kind of quiet mufflers. The wheel tubs are all good. We gotta scrape out some of the old undercoat, you know what I mean? Like it's just whatever. Been in there for years, so we'll probably do some of that. Make it look nice, you know, chip the junk off the frame. And there you have it. It's a pretty solid car. Um, yeah, the frame and all that was good. Need some sort of alignment. Check the lights, we'll go through under the hood uh, shortly here. I think what I'm gonna do is just glove up, start undercoating, I'll do a little bit of grinding work and then, uh, or uh, seam sealing, then we'll come back and undercoat it. And honestly, I might just seam seal it and finish undercoating, I'll take it to work one day once we get it legitimately plated. It's much easier to do it on a, like a two post rack or something like that than it is climbing through here. Yeah, I was just playing with the, the shifter. It was kind of stiff, but now it's, it's perfect. Um, yeah, I put new pedals in it because it had some sort of a goofy setup. So that's in there. We gotta put a, a gas pedal deal on it. Otherwise, HVAC, all that is all original. The wiring is a little, well, it's been modified, I guess. But hey, at one point, this was just a car. Well, it's still just a car, but now it's worth money. Anyway, I'll seem to see it. We'll come back, show you that. I'll drive this thing, let's be honest. So, uh, I gave everything a coat of uh, paint and undercoating. Uh, everything was seam sealed underneath and stuff. So, I mean, we'll, I don't know, we'll show a little under. I, I have mixed feelings on undercoating. I mean, it's one of those things where a car like this is probably fine. The car was undercoated at one point, so it kind of has to match. But on like a newer car, if you can drive in the winter time, undercoating is, it can kind of hold a bunch of salt and whatnot. But this thing is probably, not gonna see a whole lot of salt in its life. Oh, uh, we got shocks. So I picked up some just some Monroe's. We got an oil filter, we got a fuel filter, we got some lights. Also, yeah, I feel like I spent a bunch of money. Oh, I got some like hot rod 1040 high zinc oil. So we're gonna do an oil change to the thing. So we got the shocks out from the inside. We have to do that. There's got to be a little bit of welding on the one side, a little bit of a little bit of whatever. But we'll pull the bung here and just see what this oil looks like, which I'm sure is like 25 years old. So it's probably the good giant dinosaur juice, but hopefully it doesn't come out in clumps. It did, uh, gentle. Oof. It's a little gross. It's a little, little gas smelling. Not too bad. So we'll let this drain out right good. We got a good oil filter for it. We'll do that as Ugh, well. Thanks. That smells like gas. That's what will happen. So let that drain out. I did, uh, at one point I did check the oil, I'm sure. I hope, because we ran it. So we will check that. So it had oil in it. And uh, we'll do an oil filter change. I'll pull the welder out. We'll get set up and do, one of these shocks, because one of them, the mounts is bust. So we'll cut that off right quick. It doesn't seem like there's much in there. I could have sworn I checked the dipstick. Anyways, can't have burned that much. Those shocks are junk. We'll put some new ones in. I got the exhaust tied up. So that's good. Um, what else did I do? I guess about it, we'll have to do a light check. But yeah, we'll get this stuff down. We can drop it down, put the wheels back on it. I don't think, oh, I'm missing a couple of body bushings. Well, I just need bolts. They're all in there, it's all ready to go. I just need a bolt that's like a quarter inch or half inch longer, which I just don't have. So that'll be easy to do. I can literally lie my back and do it. But yeah, no, this thing's coming together, it looks good. Oh, and I got a cotter pin, the steering. So we'll make sure we do that as well. So the welder out and we'll set up, uh, do some shacks. Okay. Shacks, we got the old ones out, and I cut off the old pedestals. This one's actually broken. So we got these new ones on, which are kind of the same, but quite a bit longer than we need. But I'm just gonna go ahead and, uh, it's probably supposed to go like through a hole. We're just gonna go ahead and weld it. 
because why weld it? Or why, yeah, why bolt it when you can weld it? So let's give her a quick tack weld here. Don't worry, there's gas and paint cans and all sorts of stuff in the way. Just kind of eyeball this on here. Give her a quick, what's going on? What's going on? Oh, we have grounding issues. There we go. Okay. So we're just going to kind of oh, eyeball this in there. Uh, probably pretty good. Eyeball the shock up. Oh, this car won't go high enough and it's frustrating me to no end. It's in the wrong way. Okay, so that should, that should be fine. So I'll just go ahead and weld those in. We gotta do both sides. And then we can uh, drop down in these wires. I am losing it today, man. Losing it. Okay. What are those wires for? I, I don't know. Just we, cut them then. Well, they must, well, obviously they're used. They must be tail, they must rip a tail light wire out or something like that. I think they all worked at some point, but I don't know. We gotta, we gotta go through that. So I'm just gonna buzz those on right quick. I forgot to screw the brake line up. I'm getting frustrated today. It's supposed to be a fun day. The wind, the wind's blowing things around and it's messing with me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the wind we'll, is the problem. We'll be right back after these messages. You don't have a sponsor. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> show it's down the ground i'll we'll put the oil in i always put the oil in first so you don't forget um i'll do this and then oh there's gonna be some butt crack editing so i gotta climb in the back and tighten up the shock absorbers this doesn't look tight at all wow that's that's the fuel line a couple of uh <laughs> Whoopsie. So we gotta do that. Actually, I didn't think this thing had a fuel filter on it, but it does, so that's good. Um, I think all the, everything's look kind of decent. I mean, we're not, I guess it could be a little nicer. I put uh, oil in the filter, so we'll put in four quarts to start, run it, see what happens. And then, so we'll tighten the shocks. I'd like to change these plug wires. So I got some that I took off, something else, which are, better we'll put those on and actually i think the original plug wires are still in this thing possibly i thought i saw a couple or maybe they're just beat up whatever i did there so that's fine um it doesn't have a charging system so there's a, a couple things we'll leave for another video but i want this thing out i don't want it in the garage anymore it's uh it's frustrating me Okay, hang on, this is, I put the seat all the way back and of course power seat and the battery's not hooked up. Like it's just, you know, it's one of those, one of those things. Ah, it's actually not that bad. Oh, you know what I did? I forgot the bag of hardware. I think it's over there by my telephone. It's got two rubber bushings and two kind of concave or convex washers and uh, two nuts. If you could hurry up, that'd be great. Yeah, right there by my headphones. Yep, I think you're touching it. It's in your hand. Justice? I think that's it, yep. So we put the shocks on, then we dropped it down, they poke through. Don't you can't film the ground. This is not riveting entertainment. Hey, people <laughs> like my socks. Your socks? I don't know about that. So Let's just go. Are you getting the good shots here? I can't. How do I get in here? Uh. Oh yeah, you wanna? It's like one of the drive-in movies here. La la. This uh, tripod Chevys were dumb with the shocks through the floor, but whatever. This one actually wasn't rotted out. It's almost like it was a nice car. Okay, that's perfectly torqued. Do you want to hold it? 
can come in. Oh, nope, I'm done. Oh. I'm I done in here. Nothing. You got nothing. <laughs> so you can see here, this is these little holes. That's where the shocks were. And it's got these little plates, which kind of cover it all up. So pretty, there's hardly any glass in this thing though. You probably would have got a bad angle with all the blind spots we have. Okay, I'm gonna climb out and uh, we'll start this thing. Make sure it doesn't go clickety clack. Ugh. And then, I don't know. Here's Danielle. <laughs> How much butt crack should we show? Oh, well, you're showing a lot of boob. I think we got it. I think we're good. It's hot out. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna have to get a jerry can of fuel because this thing is completely out. We'll see if it starts. So. The alternator is not hooked up and I just looked, it's got the wrong bolt in it by the looks of it as well. So there's a few, a few uh, driveway fixes for Namara or the next Vigia. Let's see if it'll start or if the battery's dead. Oh, no, the lights are on in here. The battery seems a little, a little dead. The oil light works, it went off. Perfect. Do we have any signals? We have a back signal, we have a front. Yeah. Well, that side. Nothing. We have no right signal here. So, why would that be? Yeah, it's a switch. Oh, it just went on. So the switch is dirty. So we have no light back here. There's one up there though? Yeah. So I'm thinking that one of them wires there. One of the hangy downy wires? a chance it's just a small chance I don't want to lose this that uh, <laughs> future Dan will get that then we got maybe one of them uh, let's see if we can get a good ground on something I think this is it yep yeah. I think so. Burr. Might have a grounding, grounding issue. That would make sense if it's that one. So this has got to be what? What do you think this one is? This one has nothing. This one lights I up. Saw it yeah, but it's not clicking on and off. Oh, there we go. Yeah. I wonder what that's all about. Based on its length though, I'm assuming that's it. Let's see what we got going on. Oh, there is some sort of wire in here. Hmm. Do you want to maybe go step on the brake? Take the signal off and step on the brake? Okay, the camera's right here. Yep, I got it. Oh. Hi guys. Let's see if we got brake lights. Are you on the brake? I think so. Wait, is the brake the middle or the, or the end? The brake's the middle. Yeah, I'm on the brake. Well, that's not good. There's no brake lights. Okay. You want to pull the headlights? It's not. Yeah, the one says lights, pull it back. On it. Same as your car, pull on the left. It says light. What? Oh, up here. <laughs> She's pulling on the e-brake. It's pulled back. Yeah. We have no tail lights. We have headlights. So we obviously have a rear wiring issue. Push it in one click. Okay, so the park lights work. 
see if we got anything back here, just in case the switch is having a moment. Nothing and nothing. So there is some butcher wiring under the dash there. We'll take a look at that and then see what's running to the back, I guess. Let's see, but so we have front lights, turn signals, and we have driver's side turn, but no brakes and no pass. Oh, turn the light back on. Oh yeah, we have no, no running lights either, no, no plate lights. Minor inconvenience. So we'll get that working. Then we'll put the battery on the charger. Then we can go for a drive. Okay? We need gas. We need gas. Well, we I said things are going great. <laughs> Hasn't been any freakouts. There weren't freakouts. There was just <laughs> a lot of why would somebody do this? Well, why? Why? What is this? This guy was a hack. <laughs> the wiring was subpar. I'm not gonna lie. I was definitely. Oh, do I not have the right wrench? The, the wiring was rough. <laughs> Somebody at some point had done some, uh, what? Oh, China, China. Gotta go to the Canadian side of the wrenches. I hate that. Buy a repop alternator and you gotta tighten her up with metric hardware. What is this? Do they not know us on a 55 Chevrolet. So, um, we got everything kind of dialed ish together. I'm just. Stay. I was going to run a charge wire. This thing, so it had a generator, which we can use some of the wiring. But I was like, eh, I'll just run a new wire right back over to the battery, <clears throat> and that will be perfect just for the time being. Um, so now we have lights. The wiring, I don't, I don't even understand why someone would wire it the way they did. I'm, I'm gonna throw away the connector out of anger. So the way it worked, it's still a rat's nest, but it went from, yeah, it's, it's a little bit of a disaster. Don't show it off, don't have the light on. <laughs> and, uh, oh, we got the ignition on. Well, make sure the light, so we should have left turn. Right turn. Yep. Yes. Nope. Bullshit. Are you serious? Yeah. Do we have brake lights? Just one side. What? We tested this though. <sighs> I hope I wiggle these around. Does anything change? Oh, I'll go look. No. Are you freaking serious? Oh. Still nothing? No. <laughs> As I was saying, where to put my test light? This is garbage. So, the wire, someone had Reverse the wiring, I might add. Why are you kicking well, my tools? I tripped on it before. Before? So, now of course everything's all kind of together. Can I pull this out? Oh yeah, we should be able to do this. According to this, it's working. According to the light, it's not. <laughs> How? How did... That's, that's a different. The left is like here to party. The right could use a little blue chew. Uh, they're not paying us on this. <laughs> Hang on, what we got going on here? This all was like literally just working people. Nothing if I wiggle it around. Nope. Okay, so we have to deal with that. Awesome. Awesome. Just gonna cry a little bit. So, 
<laughs> I don't know what, happened. anyways, I was trying to say, so these tri fives, they have a connector, which is like a half moon deal, and somebody had sliced all that off, put it into a connector, and then half the wires went to the front, oh, and then half the wires went into this, another connector, for no reason. Like, I don't understand this, why they would do another connector. So I eliminated that, and that's where things went, you can tell here. So purple and then pink. So I think purple is right and pink is left, but you flip it so pink on the top goes to purple. Then into like, it was just, why? Why would they do that? But whatever, I guess at some point somebody had gotten an idea. Um, there's a tack on where all the wires were just a disaster there. So we got that all taken care of. Um, yeah. So I swear the lights were working. We just tested them. Then I went out and got gas. We dumped some fuel in this thing. And now what I got to do, so I'll run this wire to the battery. We have to get this uh, 12 volt switched power. And then in theory, it should charge. So if we're charging, and then, I mean, whatever, we can fix a, a brake light some other time. Oh, and we have a brake leak by the looks of it. So that's, that needs a little, a little tighten maybe. Who installed that? Oh, I see why it's a problem because it's a nightmare to get to. Oh, well, that's pretty tight. Unless it's this one that's leaking. Okay, well, we will continue to find problems until eventually there's no problems. I think it's the wrong size. Yes. So we'll be back when there's different problems. Not no problems, different problems. I think I've got everything together. I did not fix any of the taillights. The lights are... Uh, we also lost headlights. There's been a bunch of things here. There's some electrical gremlins, but uh, we got 12 volts run to the alternator. So we'll just see if it fixes itself. So the gen light is still on. But we didn't run power to it, so maybe that's why. But. We have 14 volts at the battery, which means it's charging. It's got fuel. So maybe we'll just let this run. I did check the oil, it's good. We'll let it run just for a minute. It's quiet, it makes no noise. We'll let it run, get a little bit of heat in it. Um, I don't know if I've done anything with timing or anything like that. That's all uh, past Dan, screwing over present Dan. But. We'll let that warm up. We'll clean up a little bit, move that Nomad, and see if this one will back out or if it's gonna drag all over, which I feel like it probably will. You should just put the blocks under it to start. That's such a hassle. I feel like you're just not in the mood for messing about. I'm not in the mood, I will say. This is definitely frustrating me. I didn't think it would be this big of a job. I thought the car was kind of further together, I guess, but. And honestly, undercoating and all that ugliness, it was not, it wasn't fun. I know I make it look fun, but it wasn't fun. So hopefully, let this thing run. Then, uh, sounds quiet. Oh yeah, it smokes a little bit. We gotta drive it, see if that'll heal itself. I have confidence. Okay. Let's see if we can sneak this thing out by being lazy with the the ramps. Uh, are you confident? Yes. I appreciate that. I was hoping that the shifter would fix itself. Gentle. Gentle.
You hopping in? You getting in? <laughs> What's happening here? Drive this old girl. We're gonna try to drive it. Last time we drove it, it was me too. Yes. It sure was. Seems good. I was a little. Brakes are a little touchy. Actually, it feels a lot better on the shifter. Ooh, and the brakes are power brakes. Ah, all right. Don't hit the pole. Oh no, the steering wheel's not straight. How will we handle the internet? At least there's a headliner. Oh, we didn't. There's some rattles back there. It's not the cam or not the camera. It's a little bit of rattles in the back. Look at this. Hopefully, well, the mirror's loose. So all we gotta do is fix. Needs a backup or a reverse. Nope plate light and a turn signal high beam on one side is no good so we gotta change one light bulb like otherwise we're pretty much set we gotta adjust the carburetor and stuff plug wires that'll be a job for tomorrow believe it or not tonight hasn't gone that smooth <laughs> I know I know it appears as though everything went just just dandy. This thing rides nice. Shift's good. Oh it's got no fuel gauge, I gotta hook that up. Wow. This thing is like did it stall or is it just that quiet? Other than that, we gotta fix that rattle in the back because it'll drive the internet nuts. I, I'm shocked the internet had such an issue with the rattles and the, the so mad because those rattles have always been there. Ah, uh, but the car's been put away for so long, I think they've forgotten. Oh. Man, this thing rides. Very nice. Second gear or third gear is quite the transition. Man, this thing is just like a cloud. You could actually drive this one, it's very easy to drive. Like shifting wise and everything, it's not, it doesn't have a heavy clutch or anything. It doesn't even smell that burny. But we do have fire extinguisher, right? And it's good, <laughs> good. This one having a fire, you would see me cry. I don't know if it's... The linkage is a little... A little... Got a little play in it. I'll figure it out though. stuck in. Let's go on here. Yeah, like 
like we're stuck in. Well, I guess we'll just creep home in first gear. <laughs> It doesn't feel too sloppy. Well, I guess it is. But that was in the winter time. It got some downstairs got bound up, and I just kind of snapped it loose. So I wonder if a a rod is bent or something. Oh well. Well, that's a pain. I guess it's probably. The car is really biting me today. I don't know why. I rescued this thing. You were in a junkyard. We need some full throttle, like 5,000 RPM or something. I don't actually. Oh, 327 is kind of spunky though. Just maybe I should just leave it. I think that you wise. Wow, this collection. Yeah, that guy sells sorts of stuff. Ford guy. in this video with the five mile an hour drive home. <laughs> People are gonna think, like you're just faking it. <laughs> What's going on here? Okay, so linkage, well, whatever. The linkage we can deal with any time. We gotta tow this thing to the inspection, so all it needs is first and reversed. And then, uh, yeah, lights. I'll we'll need some new wiper arm on it, but whatever. Fair weather rule, I think we should be okay. Just to, Don't do just it. Just to jostle it. Don't do it. Your natural DD speed trap instincts, I don't think, work in this scenario. Yeah, you're probably right. We'll just enjoy the nice, the nice cruise together. Except we're going so slow, I feel like a pedo or something like that. Like, yeah. why are you driving this slow beside the walking path? I just want to show off my hot rod. <laughs> And I only have first gear. <laughs> the most respectful we've ever been to the neighbors. Oh, this thing is so quiet. Nice people aren't even going to be offended by this. What are we, stand up citizens? I don't want to savor that. <laughs> so I'm going to go for like a nice, nice longer drive and see if it's going to overheat or not. You yes. know, let's just tackle the problems that we already have. <laughs> We are tackling problems, I will give you that. Remember this afternoon, like when you got home from work and you're like, oh, like, we'll do this in like two hours and then we'll be done. It was and longer than two hours. It's been like, I think five hours. Well, the sun's setting. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it'd be a quick one. We were gonna do other things after. No, the, I think we're ready to order pizza. I feel like the night is over. <laughs> the nomad one today. <laughs> the new mad. <laughs> Make it bad. <laughs> well, they gotta, they gotta pressure test the system every now and again. But otherwise, it went pretty good. So we'll. It sure does ride nice. It's very comfortable. If I get that rattle dialed, we gotta figure out the shifting linkage. <clears throat> I wonder, like, I always wonder why things get parked. And I wonder if maybe the, the linkage was just all bunged up and that's why the guy parked it or... Well, I mean, you look at a day like you had today where you're just, the wiring was really sending you and you were ready to be done, ready to be done. You just have to like keep pushing through it. Like, I can understand how people just be like, I'm over it, but we're going to take a break. And then the break lasts for forever because it just... It lasts for 25 years and the guy dies. Let me put your window up for you. Oh, thanks. What a gentleman. Yeah, it's supposed to rain, so definitely don't. Uh... Oh, is it? Fortunately, I can't really parallel park this thing too well. Are you at the garage? No, you're good. Nailed it. Wow. There's no park. <clears throat> it has gears, but it's stuck in all of them. I'm gonna see if I can just break it out of it real quick here. 
Except the exhaust is right there, so I'll put a glove on and just see what's going on. Except I've lowered it. That may have been a poor decision. Uh, well, I can't quite reach it. Ouch. Hot. Huh. Huh. Oh. Parked on a box. Can you hold this? Why it does this? It's like it's stuck in two gears at once. Oh, wow. Well, everything is hot. I think this may be a future Dan problem. But it runs ish. Got the lights working ish. It's a disaster ish. <laughs> I am beaten today, so that's where we're going to leave it. Hopefully, there's enough minutes for a video. I don't feel like doing anything else on this thing today. Um, go put the other Nomad away real quick. We'll have two mad Nomads together. We got to let them get acquainted. It's been a while. They've never really met. I'll get that and be uh, right back. Okay, look at that. Two nomads, side by side. I'm calling that a victory for today. We'll live to fight another day tomorrow. Next video, you'll probably see me work on this thing outside. In here, well, I guess we have to. My plan is, I want this thing out of the garage because I want to work on the Camaro and the Nova. And I was going to use this garage. This garage, look at it, it was clean. It's trash now. Absolute disaster. The big thing is we just need a different backdrop for the podcast, which we're filming tomorrow. We've had this car for like two or three. We need something else in the background there. So that's the plan, but everything has to move. <laughs> ah, good times. Thanks for watching. Comment below. It's time for pizza.